We're on. We're on. Wide screen. All right, this is gonna be page 10, diet-wise. Go get the book on Amazon, page 10. And actually, it's gonna bring us to chapter two. Page 10, resistance from the medical establishment. What? Why? Sadly, the history of medicine does not reflect this responsibility. What responsibility, you might ask? Go watch page nine. The first users of anesthetics were struck off as frauds. And I don't know how to say that word. And T. And anticipus. <laughs> I'm getting smarter. Anticipus was scorned by surgeons who went on operating on their top hats and coattails. I think it really is in aesthetics, but in speak, I'll, I'll put the word in the comments. And Dr. of Vienna was abused to the point of suicide for darting to suggest that doctors wash their hands before examining women in childbed which demonstrably reduced deadly, I should look these words up before I read, perpetual fever. Per, per, it's a weird word. Nearer our own time, penicillin, arguably the greatest drug of all time, was ignored for years as the discovery when it could have saved millions of lives. Even today, homeopathy, which cures gently by taking into account the whole person as opposed to merely a part is fought against with blind fury by doctors who have never tried or tested the efficacy of any of its remedies. You might think I write bitterly about the resistance to this new work, and you are right, of course. I have had my share of scorn and ridicule from colleagues who never once took the trouble to visit my office and see if the work that I did was really valid. But what distressed me the most is the, disparag the disparagement and abuse that patients themselves sometimes un have to undergo because, their food, because of their food incompatibilities. So many times, so many times, that's what he says. So many, the camera moved. So many times I have before me said and disappeared dispirited, sad, oh my goodness, sad and dispirited humans, human beings, people, who break into tears of relief when they realize that someone, at last, is willing to listen to their problems and believe them. I find that so true. That's so true, my medical doctors. As a rule, they have been scolded or told that they were neurotic and imagining things. Many of them feel that they're a burden to their family doctor when, in some cases, the opposite seems to be true. I know of the fact that every time I speak on the radio or one of our cases is featured in, a, in the press, we are deluged with calls from very many people that are anxious for help and don't know where to get it. That is why this book came to be written. If your doctor refuses to help, there is Lost my spot. If your doctor refuses to help, there is little you can do except try to sort things out for yourself. Perhaps this do-it-yourself volume will enable you to do just that. That's that's why we're really excited about this book. I make no claims to breakthrough discoveries in the field of allergies. Again, he makes no claims to breakthrough discoveries in the field of allergies, but the method which follows is my own developed over a quarter of a century and is offered freely to whomever is in need of it. That's awesome. I love that about this author. Within weeks or even days, you could be free of chronic or lifelong affliction. Without exaggeration, the lame can walk again, the respiratory crippled can breathe, the sickly and weak become strong, pain and misery diminish, but to a memory, to but a memory, to quote him. It is really a miracle. It really is a miracle. Hundreds of thousands of cases from all over the world attest to it. Now you too can truly become diet wise. Bam. 
That brings us to chapter two. I'm done for the day. Have a great day. I will see you tomorrow.